No one is immune to hype. Any critic out there who says they aren't affected by hype is a liar, or at the very least, not humble enough to admit their own faults. Some of us may have our senses dulled to it, but every once in a while a game trailer comes along and we can't help but get swept up in the current. Even for just one blissful moment, we dream of what the game may be. And sometimes that moment of dreaming and anticipation is almost more fun than actually playing games. I've been hyping myself up for games ever since my subscription to Nintendo Power, and those few pages in the old Sears catalog that they used to dedicate to video games. Remember those? Catalogs? Yeah, I barely do too. On its own, there's nothing wrong with hype. It's good. Hell, it's probably healthy to feel excitement and to share it with others once in a while. The problem is when hype gets out of control and becomes bigger than the game itself. Then there's hype's evil twin brother, anti-hype. Anti-hype can be just as dangerous, in some circumstances more dangerous, than hype. In the video game universe, you can practically predict the waves of hype and anti-hype, much like we can predict the tides based on the position of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. Hype begins the moment a game is announced, and normally builds up more and more until the game releases. Critics will judge the game's merit, and gamers will play the game, and everyone will flock to their forum of choice and talk about how much or how little they've enjoyed the game. Then, the waves calm down for roughly one week. Then the anti-hype wave begins. It generally starts with the question, now that everyone's played, insert game name here, for a bit, what do you really think of it? Some people come forward saying they still enjoy the game, but found they dislike a few things about the game. Graphics, mechanics, controls, DRM, sound design, etc. Anti-hype is a healthy part of the video game experience. It grants future consumers perspective, and it can prevent some people from wasting their hard-earned money if there's elements to some games that they would find game-breaking to their personal play style. The problem, like hype, is when anti-hype gets bigger than what it deserves to be. Suddenly, so many gamers are up in arms about a game's shortcomings that no matter how many good points a game may have, there is no forgiveness in their hive mind. And as a mob, anti-hypers can get vicious. I'll give probably the most common example. Call of Duty is empirically one of the best-selling game series of all time. It has millions of diehard fans who play the series every day. Popularity and anti-hype are often directly proportional. And with a game franchise the size of Call of Duty, that means tidal waves of acerbic gamers using any opportunity to deride any part of the game they can. I'm certain that many of you know someone who has made a claim that Call of Duty gamers are not real gamers, or that they're somehow flawed because they enjoy something that is so widely accepted despite its years of cataloged blemishes. Anyone who has a different perspective, or who can see past a game's foibles and find merit, is seen as a poor consumer. Stupid! Or in the case of critics, they're seen as sellouts, whose opinion has obviously been paid for. Their distaste for certain games has become so potent that it becomes their sole online purpose to ruin the experience for as many people possible by recycling their same complaints ad nauseum wherever someone will bother to read their comments, sometimes within the very game they purportedly hate. These extremist anti-hypers aren't trolls. Trolls torment people online for the sheer enjoyment of watching others become uncomfortable. Some anti-hypers simply cannot let their minds rest knowing that other people are enjoying something they dislike. There's a very special name for those kind of people. I believe it's an internet term that was first created in old MMOs. They're called assholes. Coincidentally, that exact same term, assholes, is used for people who overhype a game to the point of lying, never making good on promises given to media during times of previews and trailers. And while I'm on the point, developers and publishers are getting so bad at their initial presentations, they're making used car dealers look good. I mean, GTA Online still doesn't have heists, and E3 2014 was loaded with overscripted multiplayer experiences like Killzone, Battlefield, and The Division. Reel it in, guys. As a developer, hype obviously results in more sales, which means your teams, hopefully, get to keep their jobs and make more games. That is a big win for everyone. But if your PR team overhypes, you run the severe risk of damaging your company's good name, costing you countless future sales. Anti-hype shouldn't be ignored, and should be viewed as free market research for how you can improve future titles. Within reason, of course. 
And as a critic, it's sometimes my job to measure hype and compare it to a final product and let consumers know ahead of time how much of a discrepancy there is between expectations and reality. If a developer continually overhypes their products, I'm less and less excited to play their future games, even if it seems like their product has been scooped out of my dreams and put into pixels. Anti-hype can have a similar effect on critics. Every time someone's integrity is called into question and accused without merit of having a purchased opinion, or is just generally being rude to other commenters who have a different point of view, it sometimes, consciously or unconsciously, makes critics care a little bit less about their commenters. And that's a horrible feeling. After all, critics inherently want to love their commenters, because those are the people the critic is trying to serve. All critics develop a thicker and thicker skin, but sometimes the sheer volume of assholery can become overwhelming. As a consumer, extreme hype and anti-hype are caustic. Too much hype that hasn't been regulated by responsible critics results in gamers buying games that aren't as good as promised. But anti-hype can be a bit different. You may find yourself enjoying your latest purchases, spending hours of bliss in your well-deserved free time. But then you come across an anti-hype wave so big that it appears everywhere from NeoGAF to Reddit and beyond to maybe even your personal circle of friends, and it exacerbates every minor inequity the game may have. Does the game deserve to have some of these problems pointed out? Maybe, but there are definitely mountains being made out of molehills here. And now when you go back to play your new favorite game, you can't help but notice how dysmorphic it is, and you can no longer see past its flaws. Essentially, the game is ruined for you. It's like finding out that Santa Claus isn't real. You can never go back to the mysticism that brought you so much joy. I am very fortunate in that I have a small but devout following who, even when they disagree with me, they do so respectfully. But outside of Elder Geek, when I'm reading other boards about games I enjoy personally, I can't help but be affected by both hype and anti-hype. I log on my computer in the morning, and before I hit any of my usual haunts, I think, which minor saint of the Church of Video Games is being deified to an undeserved infallible throne today? Steam? Oculus Rift? Miyamoto? Kojima? And who's on the schedule to earn the gaming community's ire today? Ubisoft and Uplay? EA and Origin? Facebook? Wait, no, it's Phil Fish. Again, he just won't stay down. Or maybe it's a more popular critic than myself who had an unpopular opinion, and now his or her integrity is being questioned, and they're losing subscribers by the busload. But lately I feel hype and anti-hype have been way out of control, and they've been sucking the fun out of gaming. But there's no one person upon whom the blame finger should rest. I guess in the end what I'm trying to say is, don't be an asshole. Screw the hype and the anti-hype, and don't intentionally try to steal someone else's fun away from them. Take everything you see and hear from E3 with a massive grain of salt, and do the same for forum threads and videos that villainize the games you're currently enjoying. Play the games you think you love, and have a great time.